through fitness and gardening, I noticed they both correlated to food, which really made me pay attention to what I put in my body as well as where is my food coming from. Now, this gets really serious for me because last year I found out that I was pre-diabetic. So due to what I'm putting in my body can cause all types of illnesses. And I wanted to be more conscious about that and spread the word. So why you always got food every time I see? Man, I'm pre-diabetic. Wow. Still love my chicken wings, though. I ain't giving up my chicken wings. Man, y'all be killing me with all that chicken loving and all that. I got something for you. you I don't think you're going to like all that chicken after you see all this. Not only in D.C., but all over. Because... Most of the people, they eat from fast food, McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff. To me, that stuff is poison to you because of the fillers and the stuff. Matter of fact, most of it ain't even real chicken, you know, in, 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 in Kentucky Fried Chicken. They, it's cloned, and a lot of people don't understand and know that. But when all they got to do is look up Kentucky Fried Chicken. Where do the chicken come from? You never seen a chicken with 10 legs. So that's why I'm saying it's good for you to try to eat healthy, to stay healthy, and so you can keep your body. It's just like you putting oil or transmission in your vehicle. If you don't put the right oil in there or the right uh, transmission fluid, your engine is going to fall apart. Your body operates the same exact way. See that? So all that you eating, you see what I'm saying? So what I'm supposed to eat? Well, some fresh fruit right here. I just cut it up, sliced it up fresh, ready to heal your body, man. There you go. All right. But yeah, man, we about to roll, though. We about to bounce. You know what I'm saying? Man, she tripping. Okay, good, man. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right, home. Enjoy that food. All right, bro. All right. All right. Peace. All right. Stripper. Hey, you going to strap there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, snap. He left his phone in here, man. Let me hurry up and double back and try to get that to him real quick. I wish you would have left that little... You left that fruit cut with me, man. I'm just like hungry now. Hey, home. You left your phone, man. Oh, man. Here you go, bro. All right, bro. All right, man. See you later. Be easy, man. All right, take it easy. Oh, man. I am so offended. It is very frustrating when I see food being wasted for many reasons. Millions starve every day, and people throw away food not realizing the damage being done to society. Then I put my time and effort into preparing this food, and it gets wasted. I'm thinking I should have kept it for myself, for real. But nah, you can't, you can't save everybody, man. This food got a hold of him, man. Got a hold of him. He throw away good food and probably go get him fried wings and fried rice later. Hey, what's going on? How was your day today? How you doing? It's all right. Not too bad. I can't complain, really, I guess. Well, what's going on? You saying, damn, I don't know how you see you being like this. What's, seems like something bothering you. Yeah, I mean, really it is. Uh, how can I put it? Like, I've been trying to, you know, go out in the community, talk to people about food sustainability, healthier options, 
you know, about how to eat better and just, you know, trying to just hold on to our food supply high, you know, high less. And it's nobody's gravitating. Nobody wants to hit people like we're going to die anyway. So mm. it's just very discouraging kind of like trying to promote something that I know will be beneficial for everyone, like essentially mm -hmm. society. And nobody wants to hear it. And it's like, what in the world? This, it seems like this is the answer. Like people having all these diseases, these preventable diseases. Mm -hmm. And here I'm talking about healthy eating, a way to keep the food, you know, systems in check. And it's just like going in one, it's not even going in anybody's <laughs> ear, you know, going in one ear out the other, it's not even going in anybody's ear. So I'm mm -hmm. just really thrown off and I don't even know what to do about it. I mean, do you think people know what you're, what you mean by sustainability or food? When you say the words that you're saying, do you think people... I never I thought about that. I never thought about that. But like we've been here for a minute, and the waiter has not even <laughs> I like know. nothing. So I don't know. I'm super hungry, but it's like, should we even be eating this crap they sell <laughs> here? So it's crazy. Oh, but man. yeah, I I thank you for your insight because I'm like I was blown before I came here. Like I was truly, truly not in a good place. You know, just because it's like if nobody takes heed to this information, and we keep eating. Just these bad foods, what is going to happen to us? And that's, like I said, like how I'm pre-diabetic. If we keep with these pre-existing conditions mm -hmm. and these same habits, it just feels like we're going to extinct ourselves. Um, we focus on food sustainability and community development and health and wellness in Washington, D.C. And, you know, food sustainability for us is kind of based on a, a multiple tier system that is based on natural farming practices, based on agroecology, afroecology, um, good business practices that, you know, are based on cooperatives and sustainable business models, and also um, just the way we treat each other as well. And so I think it's kind of like a three-legged approach to what we do, and so that's how we uh, define our food sustainability. Well, right now in 2017, with climate change, um, food sustainability is going to be a major issue. Because the way that climate change is going to affect people that live in urban communities, it's going to be like a ripple effect. And so if there's a drought in California, where the majority of our food is coming from, and the cities on the East Coast like Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City are going to feel that uh, with higher food prices, maybe food shortages. And so the people who are going to be affected by this the most are low-income, uh, majority people of color, African-Americans and Latinos, will be affected by this in, in a heavy way. And so also food uh, sustainability has to do with the way we grow up our food. So we adopt agroecological uh, methods of growing food that uh, take care of the earth and the people. You know, it contributes to um, uh, the reduction in carbon emissions going to the atmosphere. And so it's like a two-pronged thing. You know, we're helping the environment, we're also helping people. And, and, and we're, you know, creating uh, business models that are also uh, not only sustainable uh, economically, but are sustainable for the people as well. And so um, the effects of food sustainability are felt in the environment, you know, and the economy. But it's like, would this help me not be obese? Because I'm just trying to, like, find better options to not be obese because it's like I'm eating all this meat and that's not good. So what can I eat so that I'm not obese and I don't want to waste it? Because I might, like, take one bite of this. I probably, I just like the way it looks, but I ain't... I might try it, you know what I mean? But usually I go with fruits that have their own seeds. Yeah, okay. Or fruits that come off a vine. Right. That have its own seeds, sometimes like a grape. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. just pretty much want to eat everything that comes from the earth, you know? Like, it got a life cycle to it, where it comes from the, from the vine. And uh -huh. then if you don't even eat all of it, you can compost it. Okay, all right. For the next life so cycle. So basically, I want to find something. It's not in a package that's just been grown, had roots. Exactly, you want to stay away from processed things. Okay, all right, I like that. Then you got your collars, mm -hmm. collars and kills. Uh, more so, I think kale give you the most benefit, but collars is good to eat too. Yeah. Oysters are great. Yeah, I don't want to get no type of diseases. I'm already pre-diabetic, like I said. All this other stuff but might cause obesity and all like that, but all these people in the world, how long is this food going to hold up and like, where is it all coming from? And when I think about sustainable foods, I think about sustainable agricultural practices and I think about food systems that support local producers, local farmers in a, in a very economical way. 
So um, just to break it down for you, man, we work in D.C. Um, we do a lot of food justice um, work in the city, um, really specialized on underprivileged communities. And so one of the things that we've learned in our um, scope of work and doing the community work is when people in um, these communities that we work in, communities that we're from, think about going to buy food, they generally think about going to the grocery store as their first option. One of the things that I think is very, very key about buying food is where you get it from. So we want to change the thought of our community and start thinking about going to get their food from farmers markets. Starting to think about growing their own food in urban communities just like this that we in. We want them to start thinking about CSA options. We want them to start thinking about local purchasing. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that we feel like is an important message. Man, we want the community to really get educated on where food comes from. Man, really understand what it does to your body. You know, how it can help you from an obesity standpoint, how it can really fight cardiovascular diseases, how it can really fight different um, heart diseases, different things that come from food, the food-based diseases or can be prevented through what we eat, man. So this food issue is a real, real important issue, especially in the city like we in Washington, D.C., where there's a ton of food deserts, man. People have lack of access to healthy produce items, man. So we need to change that. Wow. It feels so refreshing to be around others that are conscious about what they're putting in their body, about food sustainability, as well as the food cycle, meaning your food should not be wasted. It should not be food going to any type of waste. Food should be going in a cycle where as though it's being converted back into food. It's very refreshing to be around those who are in motion. Hopefully with this, our food sustainability will get stronger. Some of the paradoxes that I see uh, in Washington DC's food system is the idea that in the same areas that people are extremely hungry, where hunger uh, exists, is also the highest rates of obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes. You know, um, so there's people that lack access to healthy food, but also these are the same people that are um, most heavily impacted by diet-related illnesses and diseases. And so this is due to the like the you know the overconsumption of uh, fast foods, um, snacks, and sodas, and candy. And in the areas that lack uh, affordable uh, access to healthy food. There's a high rate of fast food restaurants, carryouts, and just corner stores that sell pretty much poison to people. And so you kind of come up with this, end up in this weird space with this paradox. You have people that are overweight, they are young kids that are, are, are medically obese, but also they, they're hungry at, at the same time. Not necessarily in D.C., but more in, in rural areas where you have these big agribusinesses that are growing a lot of corn on, on, on a mass scale. For, uh, for fuel, you know, for ethanol, for fuel, but at the same time that, you know, that's taking away food, you know, or land that can be grown for food for people, um, for small, for small uh, locally owned uh, businesses, for small farmers. So that's another interesting paradox that we see, but, you know, um, the government hasn't made a real strong step away from, 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 uh, from oil. Another one that's kind of big in D.C., and I, I'm big in the composting community in the city, is that you have waste and starvation. So there's so much food that just gets wasted on a regular basis, whether it be from universities, high schools, middle schools, uh, elementary schools, hotels, all these different places waste so much food that can, you know, grocery stores that can be uh, readily used and donated to a food bank or, you know, there can be uh, ways that this food that's being, you know, going to the, to the dump can be used, you know, taken back to the community. And so uh, that's a big movement that's going on in D.C. as well, is figuring out how to capture this food, you know, and to kind of redirect it to people that use it, that can use it, that need it, or to organizations that can uh, repackage it and give it back to the community. So those are some of the paradoxes that you see in the food system, but I think where these paradoxes exist, you know, people like myself and other organizations in D.C. and around the country are understanding of these paradoxes and finding ways that we can work inside these spaces to make a change and make a difference uh, with the community and to create new beginnings and new opportunities.
what we're working for is food sovereignty as opposed to food justice. And food sovereignty puts the decision of, of the right of land, of food, of everything into the hands of the people. And food justice could be just, uh, when I first started, I was big on food justice, but it was about just bringing a Walmart or bringing a giant or bringing a box grocery store. Food sovereignty, it's about growing your own food. Oh, you can come in. It's about growing your own food. It's about starting cooperatives, you know, alternative economics, um, putting people who are, are, are lower on the totem pole up front, so putting women up front, black women up front, uh, queer people, non-gender conforming people uh, up front, you know, um, and really changing the, the dynamics of things. And so that's what we're doing with food sovereignty. And agroecology is kind of the, the vehicle that we use to get to food sovereignty. Yeah, so we're uh, over here at Dick Street. So yeah, community comes together to take care of it. Oh, okay. Volunteers from everywhere come together and help you know put some uh, put some hours and time into it too. So where you guys get get your dirt from that you're gonna use to um, grow all your uh, vegetables and things? Yeah, so uh, some of the soil is uh, brought in from like uh, composting companies like Veteran Compost or um, Chesapeake Compost. Uh, but there's also composting here. We'll probably be doing some more of that later in the year. We'll build a, a, another compost bin so that uh, you know you can compost what's uh, you know some food scraps here. Have some delivered from a compost cab. They'll deliver table scraps that you can make more dirt, more healthier soil, so you can use it. And you don't have to go out and buy it all the time. When you, like you make it right here on site. So I mean, I'd say food sustainability and food sovereignty. That's where a community has control, has the skills, and benefits economically. So Socially and uh, uh, physically from the healthier food that's in the neighborhood. It's not, you know, somebody else controlling it. It's the community that has control over it. We're here at Dick Street Garden in Clay Terrace, D.C. and Northeast. And so um, basically, you know, we start off really with the soil is the most important thing. You got healthy soil, you're going to have healthy plants. And so we just prep our soil with compost, uh, vegetable compost. Probably some worm caches too. Mix it in, stir it up. Then we get good seeds. Um, we usually direct seed a lot of our vegetables. That means no seedlings. We just put the seeds right in the soil. Um, with kale, for example, it takes about seven to ten days for it to germinate. Once it starts germinating, it's growing. Then about in that germination process, maybe like another 30 days, 30, 35, 40 days maybe. Then we harvest. We harvest, uh, then we rinse it, you know, dry it, and then we kind of distribute it in the community or take it for ourselves. And then if you want to take it to another step, after that we will kind of uh, process it and take it somewhere else. And if it's not used, we compost it, and uh, the compost kind of goes right back into the whole cycle. So it's like a big kind of circle. Everything we don't use, we don't eat, we don't consume, it just goes back into the garden where we compost it over and over again basically and sometimes like with our um, plants like peppers peppers are like the main one maybe okra watermelons are easy we like save the seeds ourselves so if we grow the plant eat the plant eat a watermelon for example you can save the seeds and then those are your seeds for 2018 you know so you don't have to buy seeds and usually you know one seed will probably give you a, a, a piece of fruit that's going to give you like 30 seeds so you'll always have seeds to kind of continue the cycle. And so really sustainable farming is about just putting yourself in the natural life cycle of earth and what God has already created. You know, just kind of playing your role in the whole cycle. Oh, thanks, man. You put that real, uh, well said. That was well said. Um, one more question for you, man. How do you keep everybody excited about keep coming out, keep pitching in for the gardens and things like that? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. So we, we it's all about all about partnerships. You know, partnering with guys like y'all who are doing creative things, creating videos, you know. And so we're trying to get more and more people involved. So now we can have like five different communities who may have been beefing at one time, but we kind of trying to maybe have each community growing and peppers together and people, you know, try to figure out a way they can get money together that's in a positive way, you know. Oh, so we're trying to flip it. We're we working on it. So. Like stuff like this is, is going to help push that message out. Obviously, we have the festival, and it's dope that we're able to bring so many people together around sustainability, health. Um, but it's like, how are we mobilizing? If we can mobilize 15,000 people to a festival, how are we mobilizing people to get active in their neighborhoods and their communities to do the work? You know what I mean? That needs to get done to help feed people, help people fix up, clean up the communities. I mean, it's, 
we have to. I don't think we got a question. There's no question about it. We know what's killing our communities is we're not eating healthy, we're not eating good food. So how are we making sure that we're being conscious of what we put in our body? And that's something that we're thinking about. Um, and then from there, just eating that good, healthy food, obviously, is just is key. And then making it like the cool thing to do, you know what I mean? Making sure the youngest is coming up with, with, with healthy eating patterns. Um, having getting their hands dirty out here in these gardens, like, that, 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 that's a direct translation of them being more connected to the earth. You feel me? So it's like it's a direct it's a direct correlation between them getting their hands already growing the food and then growing eating the food that they grow. And I mean that's the that's the closest thing I think to really sustainability that you get is you touching the earth uh, and then you eating the earth that you just that you just grew. And I think they really don't get too much more sustainable than that.